What we're about to watch is a show called Flashpoint. Now, Flashpoint is this TV show on a Victory Network. The Victory Network is owned and operated by Kenneth Copeland. And these are self-proclaimed prophets of God. They claim to receive prophecy from on high and direct the church. In reality, they obviously aren't hearing the voice of God. I seem, I feel that's pretty obvious to everybody listening. But they do direct the church. They're evangelicals. And any church that claims to be evangelical just about listens to them and takes their direction from them. In the middle here, this is Lance Walnaw on the middle right. And then we've got Hank Kuhneman on the left right. And then we've got Gene Bailey on the far left. He's the host. And then we've got Mark Burns, Pastor Mark Burns. He, I don't think he's a prophet. I don't know if he claims to be a prophet or not. We'll probably find out in this. But Mark Burns actually ran for Congress recently and lost his election. Thankfully, because the guy was a complete nutter butter. I mean, they're all nutter butters, honestly. Everybody on this stage, but Mark Burns was closer to a position of political power than I think any of these other people have been, which is deeply, deeply disturbing. As these people are introduced, I'll probably show some clips that I have of each of them. I have a clip from everybody. And just to kind of give you an idea of what they believe and who they are leading into what they have to say so without further ado we're gonna play pokemon fire red to rom hack actually that allows me to catch all the pokemon not just the ones in fire red and i don't have to make any trades to evolve we're currently in mount moon so let's move forward watch flashpoint and see what kind of pokemon we get on location here at the southwest believers convention with me today pastor hank Lance Walnow yeah. and my new friend, Pastor Mark Burns. Give him a yeah. hand. Happy to be here. Praise God. Uh, we're, you guys were all here last night. You, uh, you heard uh, Pastor Mark. But I want to get into some election stuff. Can we talk about that today? You guys okay with that? Uh, because some things. Now, we all know, number one, I'm still holding strong to we need to fix 2020 first. I honestly don't know when these people are going to give up on 2020. Like, seriously, it's been two years, people. It's been over. Well, no, I guess two years is about how long it's been now since, like, all the whole election thing happened. November 2020 is when the election took place, but a lot of the election claims started long before the actual election took place. So two years is a fair number at this point. By the by, this came out August 2nd when this Flashpoint clip was released. And there's stuff happening with court cases around the country that that's still being, that's still plugging along. So no, it isn't. You live in a delusional world if you believe that Trump has any chance of taking back the presidency or whatever else. It's not happening. Don't give up hope on that. Uh, the election, lots of stuff happening. Lance, uh, you heard uh, stuff in Wisconsin, Arizona, Michigan, uh, things are being turned. Uh, where do you see that going? Well, this is this is in order to fix what happened in 2020. The right Republicans have to be able to be in charge of the committees that investigate. Yeah, this dude is ridiculous. Gets even more ridiculous than this. If you think this is crazy, just wait. Well, this is this is in order to fix what happened in 2020. The right Republicans have to be able to be in charge of the committees that investigate. Yeah. So this is where our prophetic crowd sometimes gets, gets it off because there's a process to a prophetic victory. And the pro there's a process to prophetic victory. That's super interesting to me. I thought the process was these, you know what? Let me tell you what the process is, in fact, because Lance Walna is associated with, with like this whole prophetic movement that prophesied that Donald Trump is going to win the 2020 election, okay? He is associated with this guy right here. Johnny Enlow is his name. And Johnny Enlow and Lance Walnaut both made prophecies about Donald Trump getting back into office, okay? Listen to Johnny Enlow's Trump prophecy. Which is further confirmation. And so I was like, Lord, as I'm saying that, what the first thing he said is, he is going to save you from things you don't know you need to be saved from yet. This is 2019, I believe, December 2019, when this came out. This is before the election took place. 
Johnny Enlow prophesied that God told him this. And then the Lord progressively began to speak regarding that, and he said, this time in the presidency is going to be a hinge of the ages and be known as before Trump and after Trump because of the way I'm going to use him. I'm using him as a Trump card, but I'm the Trump card player. Okay, now this is the relevant part. This is where it gets real. And so your nation will be known as before Trump and after Trump. And he said the nations will be known as before Trump, after Trump. That means that they're moving from a Jesus-based system before Christ and Anno Domini or Year of Our Lord to before Trump and after Trump to a Trump-based system. From Jesus to Trump is what, what we're moving to. Right. And the Lord, it was like, he's like, I'm really not interested in your all's vote this time. I'm doing it. I usually give you all that option. This time I'm not. This is a rescue operation from heaven. This is this is a, a, a moment of the ages. This- OK, so what he's saying here, according to Johnny Enlow, who, by the way, is connected to Lance Walnut heavily. They both work together in the same prophetic movement. And Johnny Enlow is sitting here telling us that God doesn't care if you vote or not. Your vote is irrelevant. God is going to make this happen whether you're involved or not. You don't have to be involved. That's what Johnny Enlow is saying. And his buddy, Lance Walna, now is saying you do have to be involved, actually, to fulfill God's plans and intentions and prophecies you have to make them happen i thought this was all part of god's work i thought god was going to make this happen what happened there's a process to a prophetic victory and the process is you have to win the midterms you have to you have to control the committees set the agenda that investigates what happens with Republicans and public scrutiny yeah. so that it's not done like a shell game right. or, or avoided. When that happens, you'll see the decertification momentum. There's no such thing as decertification. It's a fabricated term. Continue. If there was to be a reset for Donald Trump going back into office before the next presidential cycle, it would be because Republican committees were able to facilitate a process where the truth got out at such a level that states would decertify what they had certified, and you will have a constitutional crisis that will go to the Supreme Court to see. So that's the plan now. He wants it to cause a constitutional crisis that needs to be decided by the Supreme Court because he knows that the Supreme Court is ultra-conservative nutcase. And if he can get a case in front of them, it will go his way. That's the whole bit here, right? That's... That's his whole goal. He's laying it all out for us. That is disturbing stuff, dude. There's no precedent for this. What do you do when you have a decertified election post two and three years in? Interesting, interesting story, isn't it? But for that to happen, we have to win. To win, you have to trust that the voting is going to be done honestly. And the part that you need to know that's important is, I talked to David Barton about this, is that because people write... Yeah, David Barton is a far-right nutcase. I talked about him in a previous episode that I released, but he believes that people should be allowed to own nuclear weapons. And he knows that people will be responsible with them because they're Christians. What do we do with non-Christians in the country? We get rid of them. Hitler had a term for that that he liked to call the Jew hunt. So take that for what you will. I talked to David Barton about this is that, because people write to all of us, how, how do we want to have a fair election? It's going to get stolen again. Not so fast. There's at least 140 different specific legislative acts finally done by bold legislators yep. because of us. People like us to put the pressure on yep. them. Amen. And they finally got a backbone, so they have actually revised voter ID, ballot policies, ballot boxes, outlawed, 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 double confirmation. They've tightened up the ability of theft in the electoral process where the key states are concerned. So now it's a matter of us not being apathetic and saying, what's the use? We have to show up. Yeah. That's true. And- yeah. So I've been doing this thing recently when, when I watch these guys, I point the things out that they say and make note of the fact that we should be doing it too. They're giving advice to their people 
about how they win, how they succeed in these elections, in these culture war issues. We should be taking a cue from them. He says they need to show up. They need to show up and vote. That's accurate. That's correct. That is how people win elections. It's not just showing up, though. It's not just about that. Not only do we need to show up and vote, not only are they showing up and voting, but they're also spreading memes like wildfire. It is part of their ideology that they have to effectively proselytize. They have to spread the message far and wide. And how do they do that? Through memes. How do you think QAnon got as big and popular and famous as it did, as quickly as it did? It was memes spreading ideas to everybody that they know. Why do you think that one uncle that you can't stand talking to is always there at Thanksgiving and he knows people don't like hearing it, but he goes there and talks about Trump anyways? He does it because he wants to spread the message. You need to be that uncle who is in favor of human rights rather than against them. You need to Spread these ideas to your family members, to your friends, to everybody you can. That's how these people are winning. They're doing that, and we aren't. Anyway, let's keep listening. The concern. So now it's a matter of us not being apathetic and saying, what's the use? We have to show up. Yeah. That's true, and I'm glad you said that because so many people uh, have written to me, I like I'm sure they have to you, Lance, about, well, I'm just not going to vote until they get this thing fixed. Well, that's ridiculous. You're, you're absolutely feeding into the problem. To get yeah, this is one of the things that I find particularly interesting about the whole game plan with Republicans. Claiming voter fraud was inevitably going to lead to distrust of the system and lower voter turnout for the Republicans. That was an inevitable consequence, and they did it anyways. I found that so interesting that they went with this route anyways. Daring, honestly. But this is the point that they're making anyway. You need to go no matter what. You need to vote no matter what. Oh my god, dude. I'm I'm dying right now. This is not good. I'm getting straight hecked over here. Keeps using water gun on me. The uh, fix you have to Yeah, have. so and, and I believe personally, I don't think we can do any type of electronic machines. I'm all for back to paper ballots, uh that there's a machine. I, yeah, amen. Yeah. Going back to paper ballots is ridiculous and pointless and makes things more difficult and takes longer to count everything and all of that. It's a waste of our time and money and manpower and effort and everything else. It's stupid and it's not something that we should be doing or even considering. But here we are. Yeah, yeah. I'd rather deal with dangling Chad than <laughs> stolen. Yeah, dangling Chad, by the by, is a reference to... The 2000 election, I believe, Al Gore versus George Bush. The Supreme Court, in large part, decided the election, the, the 2000 election, because it all came down to Florida. And as it turns out, Al Gore actually won the election. He actually did. He, after recounts and all this other stuff, they determined that Al Gore really did win, but he conceded to George Bush after the Supreme Court decided that any ballots that had a hanging chad on them were not to be counted. It was the perfect example of crooked, corrupt Supreme Court decisions that I've, I think I've ever seen. Going back and looking, it was absolutely disgusting how everything played out in that election. But anyway... If anybody had a right to complain about, like, the election results, it was Al Gore, not Donald Trump. But here we are. So that's what that reference is all about. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> I'd rather deal with dangling Chad than stolen. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you have to be old enough to remember that. Pastor Mark Burns, tell me, what do you think, uh, you know, we... So they're getting Mark Burns into this now. So I, I just want to show you guys a couple of clips from him. He's a QAnoner. And like I said, he ran for Congress and he lost his primary against a less nutty, less radical Republican, luckily. He subtly sided with Russia against Ukraine when all of this broke out. Let me just show you the clip, actually. Hang on. Let me find it. 
Yeah, he released this clip around the time that the Ukraine war started. I think this actually came out February 21st, 2022. No, maybe not. May I? You know what? This may have been January 21st, 2022. I'm not sure. But anyway, listen to this. Why are we considering starting a new war for the uh, border of Ukraine and not doing the same for American southern border? So it was this big distraction, basically, to draw people's attention toward the southern border and comparing it to Ukraine and discouraging the U.S. from being involved in the Ukraine conflict in any way, shape or form. When everybody saw what was happening, it was very obvious that Putin was to blame for this entire thing. And it was the morally right position to support Ukraine in all of it. So I, I guess you could say subtly, subtly siding with Russia. I'll put it that way. That one was mild, though. I have a bunch of way more on the nose clips from this guy. Let's see here. This is a good one. This one, I named this one. Mark Burns says LGBT indoctrination is a national security threat. This one came out early June 2022. And it goes a little beyond just calling it a national security threat. Listen to this. The LGBT transgender grooming our children's minds is a national security threat because it is ultimately designed to destabilize the republic we call the United States of America. That's why when I'm elected, I don't want to just vote. I want to start holding people accountable for treason. To the so he wants to charge members of the LGBT community with treason. In a second, he's going to tell us what he intends to do with people who, in his mind, commit treason. Keep listening. Constitution, I am going to push to reenact HUAC. HUAC is the House of Un-American Activities Committee. It was a real committee that was formulated back in the 50s, and it's a, a committee that we should reenact that starts holding these people accountable for treason. Lindsey Graham should be held accountable for treason for supporting Joe Biden's gun grabbing Second Amendment law that he's trying to push forward. Lindsey Graham, my opponent's mentor, just stated that I am supporting all initiatives that Joe Biden has put forward with gun control and he is pushing for others, Democrats, to push it to a vote. Mitch McConnell just stated to an urge other Dem Republican senators to support Lindsey Graham to come after our guns, to confiscate our guns. That should be held for treason, not... Okay, so anybody who wants to pass gun legislation, just basic gun legislation, Lindsey Graham was siding with the most basic, lightest gun legislation out there. Dude was not trying to take everybody's guns. So anybody who, who sides with basic, light gun legislation and any members of the LGBT community, he intends to charge with treason when he got into office, right? Listen to uh, what he thinks should happen to people who fall into that category. Just be voting people. No, we need to hold people for treason, start having some public hearings, and start executing people who are found guilty for their treasonous acts against the Constitution of the United States of America, just like they did back in 1776. So he wants to charge people with treason if they're part of the LGBT community and execute them. That's the goal. That's what he said. That's what he believes. That's who Mark Burns is. Does it get more depraved and disturbing than that? I cannot imagine a more depraved set of beliefs. I mean, these are out there. Anyway, keep listening to Flashpoint. Now that we know who Mark Burns is, see what Mark Burns has to say for himself. What do you think, uh, you know, we talk a lot, of, and you and I were talking earlier in the back there, uh, uh, about where the nation has turned since 2020. You know, we've seen a great shift, and the shift has been in all age groups, in all genders, yeah. in every race. Where do you see that happening? Where do you see where... I find it interesting that he said all genders and every race, rather than both genders, because 
He's one of those people who absolutely insists there are two genders, no more, no less, no such thing as non-binary. Blah, 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 blah. You know, he's one of those people. Well, I see a, a, a massive shift. First of all, we the people are waking up. Yeah. We, we, right. we the people are discovering that that government has the only power government has is the power we the people actually gives them. It's civics one on one. And so yeah. now because people are becoming aware that clearly we they stole an election in 2020. Let me just say yeah. that. Number one. Yeah. No, it's becoming clearer and clearer that that is a complete conspiracy theory. The more time passes between then and now, the more obvious it becomes, the more information comes out about this. 2020 was the most secure election in U.S. history. It was not stolen. But keep on believing that if you want, I suppose. Do y'all believe that? Yeah. <laughs> They stole an election, right. and it is clear. You cannot tell me that Joe Biden received more black vote than Barack Obama, both elections. Well, that's an interesting point, but once again, a propagandistic one. The whole thing about this is as time goes on, people have children, and more people reach voting age. This is another propaganda method that Trump used. He said he received more votes than any sitting president has ever. Uh, yeah, that's because there were more voters. Money is worth more today than it was in the year 1900. Also, it's no surprise. You received more votes than Abraham Lincoln. Does that mean you're more popular than Lincoln? No, it means there are more voters. Seriously, this is just a propaganda perspective, a propaganda angle that they're taking, and they've been doing this since the very beginning of this election conspiracy stuff, honestly. Joe Biden got more black votes than Barack Obama because there are more black voters now. Donald Trump got more votes than any sitting president because there are more voters now than there were in 2016 when he ran last. Yeah. You can't you can't tell me that. So clearly there has been some some theft that is happening in our voters process. Great. Prove it. Prove it. If you really believe that, then show us evidence. We have no reason to believe this unless you show evidence. And Americans are waking up to it. Now, what is happening is people are just getting tired. They are. They're just getting tired. And guess what? They're getting tired of weak Republicans also who are sitting back letting liberal Democrats run our nation to the ground. That's true. I wish I had some help in the building today. Come on now. Yeah, that's right. All right. Pastor Hank, I mean, you've seen it. Uh, you represent Omaha, that part of the, of the, of the states. Hank Kuhneman, guy in, on the second from the left here lives in Omaha, runs a mega church in Omaha, Nebraska, and he's he claims to be a prophet of God. I'm honestly kind of surprised they didn't refer to him as Prophet Hank because I think that's his preferred title. But yeah, that's who Hank Kuhneman is. So let's keep listening. In Omaha, that part of the, of the, of the states, uh, where are you seeing? Are you seeing the same thing that uh, Lance and Pastor Mark are seeing, that the people are rising up, we the people? And, and I know that's kind of an... It seems like an yeah. obvious question, but I mean, you yeah. see it from a different perspective every week. Well, one of the things that I want to remind you, and it's great to see everybody here in the live audience as well, but uh, God prophesied years ago, this is before all of this that was happening, uh, Pastor Gene, that there would be a righteous rebellion that would come upon this nation. And um, he said it would right. be a rebellion of a, of, a, of a pushback that would bring many put it backs. And um, Pastor Burns was mentioned. Uh, what does that mean? I, I'm not really sure I understand. ...about the 2020 election as well as Lance. And one of the things that we have to remember, you know, I was talking to Mike Lindell uh, last week, and he said something that really hit me. He said, we have to be careful of what is election deflection, where a lot of discussions today is to pull us away from the real issue right. of what happened in 2020, and that was that the election was stolen. Yes. No. You live in a delusional fantasy land if you believe that. And, and so what's, what's important about this election being stolen 
is, and not being deflected by it, is once you go back, it even has a spiritual connection to it. The Bible says you first bind the strong man, and then you can go in and clean the house. Come on, clean the house. Bind the strong man? I'm not sure what he's like getting at with that, but okay. Hint, hint, and, and spoil their goods. And so I think we've got to go back to 2020, but I want to say this last thing. You know, they are afraid, the people that have done this to our country. And God said that there would be uh, great exposures. We're seeing that. Great squirming. He said great reversals, but then there's going to come a divine great reset that God is doing on this nation and around the world. Uh-oh, he's talking about the Great Reset in a positive light. A lot of his listeners are conspiracy theorists who are deeply afraid of the term the Great Reset. It's this big conspiracy that it's... All right, let me rephrase. It's not, a, it's not just any conspiracy. It's a grand, all-encompassing conspiracy theory that includes basically every world leader claims that they're all globalists they're all trying to break down borders and control the world and they want to inject you with microchips and all kinds of other crazy stuff i've covered it recently even if you just go back on my telltale and filter channel and look around for anything with mel k she talks about the great reset constantly and every time she does i have to go back through the same explanations about it but like i said i go through them so if you're curious about what the great reset is just look into my videos with Mel Kay in them. Anyway, it surprises me deeply that he's talking about a great reset, that he used that specific phrase. My God, I'm seriously surprised by that. That God is doing on this nation and around the world. And in August 16th of 2020, God prophesied ahead of time. People can say what they want about the election. God said they were going to steal the election. They were going to delay it through a chaotic, planned thing. Well, we saw what they did. But here's the good news. Everybody that's in this room and those of you that are watching, he said, do you think that they are going to be able to take my nation from me? So we've got to keep working hard. It's like Lance many times says, it's the ground populist movement of us rising up and, and voting. Yes, continue to do so, but also be a, vo uh, a voice. And when we do that, we're going to work with God. to. You catch what he said there? Voting. Yes, that's important. And continue to be a voice. Basically, share as many memes, as many political memes as you can possibly find. Share them to everybody you know. That is his advice to his audience, and that is my advice to you. If you want to try to reverse this, we need to use the similar, to, uh, similar tactics to what they're using, except we're going to be ethical about it. We're not going to be crooked or corrupt or derogatory or attack people for who they are inherently or any of that stuff. We're going to do it in an honorable, honest way rather than how they do things. Bring that great reset back into the earth. But we've got our work cut out yes, for we us do. Uh, yeah. between now and then. And I think we all, uh, if there's been a one benefit since 2020, is that we've saw, seen, I know everybody in this room agrees, we've seen the level of corruption that I was shocked and I don't believe we're at the bottom of the corruption yet, so we're going to get to the bottom of it. What corruption are you talking about? Yeah, sure, there's some corruption in the government. That's true. In fact, entirely too much. But what corruption is Gene Bailey talking about that has been uncovered? He's actually talking about election fraud, I'm guessing? He never gets specific, though. You ever notice that? Never gets specific, and he never gives us any proof. Never. All right, speaking of elections, I got a video I want you to see. This was a, a, a consumer video shot. Uh, I think he's from his car about a mobile voting van. Who ever heard of this? Watch. Okay, now they're going to give us fake evidence. And I will prove to you in a minute that it's fake and show you exactly what types of tactics they use to fake this type of thing. Just check this out. Is this for what vote for what the election what election for just for racine state elections state elections do i need my id or anything 
Do I need identification? I don't have that. Is it for mayor? No, the mayor's not on this ballot. What's what's on this ballot? What's on this ballot? This is primary, primary governors, senators. Okay. I haven't seen anything suspect so far. Oh, that's a sample. I fully expect to see something suspicious because that's how they do this. They have a tendency to cut clips off and lie about things and twist it around to make it look completely different than how it actually was. So it doesn't seem suspicious to me at all at the moment, but I'm very confident that they're going to slip something in that makes it look super suspicious. Oh, okay. Yeah, very possible this is staged. I'm not sure. Treasurer, Congress. So it looks like mostly Madison stuff? Uh, yeah. And the state, if you look on the back, there's more. Okay. You know why this is suspicious in these guys' minds, in, in the Flashpoint mind? Because it's a black guy running it. You know you can't trust a mobile voting van when there's a black guy driving it around, right? Circuit short. All right. So y'all, you guys are with the city? Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, so this like a this is a drop box like uh the actual You guys are out here every day? No. Okay. We're out here today until noon. You move around throughout the city. Okay. Until noon, but I need ID. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Whether you need ID or not is dependent on like what district you're in, what area you're in, and stuff like that. In this case, I guess you do need ID. I'm not seeing what's suspicious about this, honestly. I fully expected to see some shady, suspicious thing happen, but I'm just not seeing it at all. All right, so if you grasp that. Uh, Explain what that was. All right, so this is, a guy, this is Wisconsin. He's driving this mobile voting van. So we all know drop boxes are bad, right? We all No, why are drop boxes bad? I, I still have not wrapped my head around that. What's bad about that? Oh, there, those are bad. This is the next iteration of that. It's a van that drives around, hands you a vote, you can vote, They'll turn it in for you. No, he's, didn't he specifically say he won't turn anything in? You have to bring it to a drop box yourself. And even so, who cares? Who cares if he turned it in for you? Why does it matter? That's the thing. Votes are tabulated. They're recorded and written down, and they compare your signature and information with the information that you have on file with like the clerk or the secretary of state or wherever, whoever you turned it into when you originally signed up to vote, when you originally registered. That's how this works. You know how they've been catching all of these Trump supporters voting twice, like tons and tons and tons of them because Donald Trump specifically asked his voters to vote twice. You guys remember that? 600,000 people could vote by absentee in this state. Yeah, are, you, are you confident in that system? Well, I, they'll go out and they'll vote and they're going to have to go and check their vote by going to the poll and voting that way because uh, if it, if it uh, tabulates, then they won't be able to do that. So let them send it in and let them go vote. And if their system's as good as they say it is, then obviously they won't be able to vote. If it isn't... What he just did was against the law. He asked his voters to vote twice. Voting twice is against the law. And you know what? A whole bunch of Trump supporters did what he told them to do and voted twice. And they've been caught every single time because that's illegal. Because when your vote is recorded, when you submit a vote, it's compared with your signature and your address and name and all of your information that you submitted when you originally registered to vote. And if it doesn't match, not a, it's not thrown out. It's recorded and you're investigated for it. That's how this works. Voting is really very secure in the U.S. It was secure in 2020 and it's still secure. The fact that they're trying to 
make people wary and suspicious of elections like this by submitting things like this, absolutely disgusting to me. This voting van is moving around the city, collecting people's votes, whoever, whoever wants to vote. You have to write your name down and your address and your signature and all that stuff. And when they bring it back to City Hall or wherever else, they compare it to the voting records. If your signature or name or address or whatever don't match, they throw it out and they go investigate you. That's how this works. It's how it's always worked. Voting in the U.S. is extremely secure and it's honestly hard to get one over on people with voting. It really is. Though Trump desperately tried, obviously, by telling his voters to go vote twice. So anyway, point is, they're fear-mongering about nonsense. I was expecting to see something really crazy in that video. It was just of a mobile voting van. There's nothing crazy about that at all, honestly. Then it goes, to, they never in the same place twice. So they keep driving around. It's a mobile drop box. So this, this, no cameras are there, no, no way to document it. So Wisconsin. No way to document it? You mean like voter registration books? We have no way to document who voted. They're giving you their name and address and signature. And if it doesn't match what's in the voter registration books, they throw it out and investigate you. What do you mean there's no way to document it? They're literally turning in documents. Yeah, this is in Wisconsin. No ID Madison. required. No ID required. So this is what we're up. He specifically said an ID was required. What are you talking about? Oh my God, dude. You know the sad thing about this whole thing? Gene Bailey and Lance Walna, Hank Kuhneman, Mark Burns of all people, they know. They know how this works. They know exactly how voting works. They have this entire time, especially Mark Burns, because he ran for office. They know exactly how voting works. Now, I've just explained it and explained why it's so deeply ridiculous that they're framing it this way. It nonsensical. It, it doesn't match up with reality at all. And they know that. There is no way they don't know that. Ha being so deeply involved in politics as they are. But their gullible sucker audience doesn't. They don't know that. That's what makes this so deeply sad. Their audience is being taken advantage of. And they have no idea. These people are nothing short of scam artists, plain and simple. ID required. No ID required. So this is what we're up against. Now, here's, this is what you're not seeing on the mainstream media. That's why Flashpoint's so important and people standing up and saying stuff about this. We've got to... Well, Flashpoint is mainstream media in large part. I mean, they're not a... They're not CNN or something like that, but they're certainly mainstream. I mean, they are owned and operated by somebody who's very close to being a billionaire. Kenneth Copeland has some $800 million or something like that. This is pretty close to mainstream media, first of all. And second, the real mainstream media, Fox News, CNN, ABC, blah, 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 they're not covering this because it's complete nonsense. It's fear-mongering nonsense intended to do absolutely nothing but so doubt and fear and uncertainty it's called fud fear uncertainty and doubt it's a uh media propaganda brainwashing term that's what they're doing that's all they're doing is sowing fear uncertainty and doubt in the election that's it that's what it is all about baby that's what they've been doing since day one stand up and go whoa 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 wait a minute you know that's not legal our Yes, it is. How is that legal? And who decided it was legal? This is, this goes to the very core of our, our, whole pos our whole policy and process, Lance. If we can't have a fair election, we don't have a country. Which is why, look, the, the strategies we're talking about have to go beyond just generic, let your voice be heard. I mean, you guys, your Facebook posts actually don't make a difference because they're not affecting a politician. They do actually make a difference. Do not listen to what Lance Walnut here is saying. It's completely ridiculous, and I can't even believe that he's saying it right now.
What you want to do is go to precinctstrategy.com. That freaks the left out. Axios is going nuts with this. Flood the zone. You have to show up at the precinct. You have to become a precinct worker. You have to become a precinct captain. You know the Republican Party has 300,000 offices open for precinct captains they don't tell you about? Because they're afraid the grassroots movement will take the spots. Yeah. yeah. So you've got to yourself go to precinctstrategy.com and find out how to, that's why we won in Virginia. Yeah. We made it hard to cheat. We, we went from a 25% turnout, right. conservatives and Christians, to 90%. We flooded the zone, yeah. and we were everywhere like ants at a picnic. They couldn't steal it in Virginia. Yeah. Well, it's really interesting that he's listing an election that he believes wasn't stolen. That's like the standard tactic for the right at this point, just claim the election was stolen. I mean, Carrie Lake won her primary for gubernatorial candidate, which means she's running for governor, I believe, in Arizona, I think. She's now the Republican candidate for governor there. As of like yesterday or a day before or something like that, she won her election, the primary election. And she, even then, even having won, said there were election irregularities. Uh, there weren't, of course. It's all about propagandizing to people. No more, no less. Oh, that's right. All right. Yeah, you can applaud to that. Amen. You know, I just want to say what, what they're trying to do is create a real automotive with that, Pastor Gene. Anyway. Did you get that going right? Create an automotive? Is that what he said? I don't understand. You know, I just want to say what, what they're trying to do is create a real automotive with that, Pastor Gene. Anyway. Is this like a, an inside joke with them or something? Pastor Gene. Anyway, did you get that going right along? Automotive what? A real automotive with that. Then they're going to try to use a train and have a real locomotive. So, you know, this is where oh. this thing is heading. I don't understand. I feel like I'm missing a joke or something. What? What? What's he talking about? Beware of the dad humor on the panel. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I, I'm OK with dad humor. That's good with me. Does somebody in the chat understand? Am I missing something? I don't get it. You keep using that word. I don't think it means what you think it means, right? <laughs> Good Princess Bride reference. Love it. Yeah, I'm not uh, not picking up what you're putting down there, Hank. <laughs> All right, so I want to show you guys right. a poll, guys. This is number one back there. The CBS News poll. Uh, and Pastor Mark, I'll get you to comment to this. There's a gender gap on enthusiasm. Women are less likely than men to say they're enthusiastic about voting. Now look at the chart there. Very enthusiastic men, 56%, women, 44%. And you can see this somewhat, but look at the not very enthusiastic. So what this is saying is women are less enthusiastic than men. What does that say about where we're at as a nation? Pat? Well, first of all, I... Well, I think I'm doubting everything that they release automatically. I'm not even fully convinced that these statistics are real. Something I've learned about watching these people is they love to lie about things. Blatantly, outright lie. Unabashedly. Like, they will make things up. They will clip things out of context. They'll do whatever it takes to convince you that they're right and you're wrong or the Democrats are wrong, or whatever, because they have something called an ends-justify-the-means mentality, which is a hallmark of a cult. This is the kind of thing you find in cults all the time. They believe that whatever you have to do to reach your goal is justified, no matter what. As long as you succeed in taking office, as long as you succeed in, I don't know, getting rich, or whatever it is, you were justified in doing whatever it is you had to do to get there. If it's for God, it's okay. You can lie, cheat, steal, manipulate, whatever. That's what it's all about. And ends justify the means mentality. And that's why they're willing to lie to their audience, blatantly, outright lie to them. Because if it means getting them on what they believe to be God's side, it's okay. It's fine. So don't trust a single word out of these people's mouths. Not one.
I bet you there are some enthusiastic women here at Flashpoint who's ready to take this nation back. Somebody say, yeah, 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 that's me. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, uh, listen, <clears throat> women are the backbone of uh, no, a guy has to say something positive about women now, and he's struggling. He's trying to come up with something. Women are... Big, long pause. Wim women, uh, what am I going to say? What am I going to say? Got to drag this out as long as I can to come up with something. That's funny. <clears throat> women are the backbone of uh, American society, number one. Let me just say that. Right. That's right. uh, even in the church, right? Come on. <laughs> you know, uh, you can't have church unless you have some strong women. I just think women just realize that there's just too much crap that's happening in politics and they have and they don't want no mess in it until the real power, which is in the power of the hands of the Lord Jesus Christ. You're losing him. You're losing him, Mark. I think he you can tell when some of these public speakers say something that's clap worthy. I think he just said something that he believed to be clapworthy, and it, it didn't land. To take this nation back for the glory of the Lord Jesus, that's when they're ready to get involved. You guys hearing the lackluster clap in the background? I guess he's going to end his sentence, and then they're all going to go nuts. In I can't hear nobody, ladies. Come on. Come on. <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> Well, yeah, yeah, it's, it's time. It is time. It's All right, time. guys, let's go to number uh, number two here. I'm going to skip one. Let's go to this. this is CBS News poll: Younger voters and turnout. Is this a problem for the Dems? Uh, younger voters are problem for the Dems. I find that really interesting because he he obviously recognizes that Republicans are they skew way 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 older, right? Fascinating stuff, man. Are the most supportive of Democrats and the least likely to turn out. They're less likely to be enthusiastic about voting than older voters. So what does that mean, Lance, when we have the young people that they're enthusiastic, they're the l most supportive of them? You know, the part of the reason for this, part of the reason that these people are, are so fervent about voting like this is because they view it as like... A, a religious or a spiritual obligation they must vote it they are mandated by god to vote that's how they view it but they're least likely to turn out yeah well what it means is if you poll young people and i pulled some out here that have been at the this flashpoint uh, audience and they have a cynicism about who to trust a recent barna study that's going to be public uh came out and said that uh, almost like 80% of Americans do not trust politicians. It used to be that they didn't trust the media, but now they don't trust the politicians either because they see them as linked together. So that produces a cynicism in the youth right. because they don't know who to trust or who to believe. But it also creates an opportunity because if anybody ought to be able to build a rapport with uh, the next generation, it ought to be believers who are doing the job right yeah. because we really are only motivated by a, a quest for what is true. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so I'm telling you, there's, a, there's an opportunity hidden in that data because young people are saying, where are the political leaders that I can believe are sincere and not in it for the money? Yeah. Pastor Gene, before yes, you go to that next question, I want to be clear. Your question that you asked just a moment ago, and I want to make sure I heard it correctly, you said women are less enthusiastically politically about Democrats. Did I, hear, yep. I didn't hear that part. And I don't think I answered it correctly now. Well, let me yep. just quickly hit to that. Real women realize that the Democrats- Oh, he came up with another good thing to say about women. Okay, Let, let's hear what he, the other positive thing. He's been sitting here for about five minutes, come up with a new idea. Let's hear it, Mark. Now, well, let me yep. just quickly hit to that. Real women realize that the Democratic policy and platform are trying to redefine what a real woman is in America, and they're tired of it. That's right. It's just more culture war BS. Come on, isn't this so tired by now? Can you define woman? Give me a break, man. That's good. Real women will never support grown men wearing a dress trying to pretend like they're a woman. Okay, uh, I hear that, and let me counter with 
Real Americans will not judge or try to prevent anybody from doing anything they fucking want. You ever consider that one? What happened to freedom? This is America. I love freedom, right? There was a point in time where I think Republicans liked to pretend that they were also in favor of freedom or also loved freedom. What happened to that? Am I not allowed to do whatever the fuck I want? Can I not wear a dress if I want to wear a dress and it's none of your goddamn business? What happened to that mindset, Mark? It got flushed down the toilet by Donald Trump 10 or 15 times. If you know, you know. Try to try to be equate to a, what a real woman is. I don't believe no man should ever participate right. in women's sports here in America and real women are tired of it. That's right. All just culture war nonsense. I can't hear nobody. Yeah. Yeah. So, all right, yeah. this, is a, this is an answer, a question that only you can answer, Pastor Mark. Mm -hmm. So, what a, I know you can't speak for everybody. Sure. That's black. Sure. I don't know if you notice I'm white. Oh, my. Oh, my God. Here we go. This is going to get real racist real fast, isn't it? Black. Sure. I don't know if you notice I'm white. Oh, my God. I know. Pastor Gene is white. <laughs> I just, full disclosure. He identifies. Full disclosure. He identifies as white. <laughs> so, <laughs> so <clears throat> even the mainstream media is reporting that people of color are abandoning the Democratic yes. Party. Your opinion. Wait, who? When? When did this happen? He says the mainstream media is reporting, even the mainstream media is reporting, that people of color are, are abandoning the Democratic Party. Who said that? Where did you hear it specifically? You ever notice they never come with proof of any of this stuff? Yeah. Source? Trust me, bro. That's what it's all about. Exactly, Todd, Todd on high. Ridiculous, man. How do they expect anybody to believe them? How do they expect anybody who uses basic logic and reasoning skills to trust them? The answer is they don't. If you have basic logic and reasoning skills, they don't expect you to or care if you believe them or trust them in any way. They're looking for the gullible ones. They're looking for the suckers. That's what it is all about, baby. My tribe's men have been dressing up as women in our ceremonies long before the first Christian came to America. Yeah, well, these people pretended to be about freedom at one point in their lives and, you know, free to do anything you want. Diversity is their strength. Not anymore, I guess. Not anymore. Ridiculous. Why? Well, first of all, they realize, well, first of all, let me just say this. You can't speak to it. Let me just say this. Yeah. You can speak to it because your authority is not based off of the color of your skin. That's right. Your authority is based off of the power of God. Yeah. I okay, I don't think it's based off the power of God, but you can speak to anything you want, anything you damn well please. That is how I view things. I don't care. It doesn't matter to me if you're black, white, male, female, or a man, woman, or whatever. It doesn't matter to me what you are. You have a right to have an opinion, period. You have a right to your political opinion about anything at all. Feel free to voice that opinion. Now, be prepared for me to come in and tell you you're completely wrong on some things, but men are allowed to have an opinion on abortion. They're even allowed to be wrong on it. Just expect me to come in and correct you. That's all. That's as you view it. That's my God-given right. That's the free market, right? They don't view it that way. They, In all sincerity, they're not in favor of the free market of ideas. They claim to be. They're not. They're not in favor of freedom. They claim to be. They aren't at all. I tell white pastors all the time, open up your mouth. Yeah. Forget if they call you racist, let them call you racist. Jesus said that they're going to hate me first before they hate you. So when I speak, I speak to the authority that comes from the power of God, not the color of my skin. Yeah. Yeah. So, if, so when you're a white pastor, you speak against critical race theory. Amen. If you're a white pastor, you speak against Black Lives Matter. Okay, why would, okay, Black Lives do matter. Why would anybody speak against and or uh, like a movement that's trying to improve the lives of people in the United States, a civil rights organization blows my mind that people are 
actively and openly opposed to a civil rights movement like that. Aside from that, critical race theory is a class taught in grad school, and it's nothing more than a lens through which people analyze the world. That's really all it is. It's not intended to be the way that you view absolutely everything. It's just a way to show you another perspective, another way of looking at statistics. That's basically what it is, plain and simple. But these people have to fight the culture war. That's what it's about. That's what it's always been about. That's what it'll always be about with these people. So, yeah. All lives matter! In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, this is another piece of propaganda. All lives matter, not black lives matter. You should be saying all lives matter. Yeah, black lives matter. The term black lives matter. I can't believe I even have to say this, but here we are. The term black lives matter should actually be black lives matter, comma, also. That's what it means. Black lives, ma black lives matter too. It's not that they're saying... Black lives matter and no other life matters. Nobody ever said that or implied that. And if you think that, you're a fool. These people don't think that. They realize what the saying means. They are just propagandizing. That's it. Amen. So don't you let liberal agenda tell you I can't speak to it because I'm a white man. The devil is a liar. My citizenship belongs That's in right. the kingdom of God. Yeah. So when I speak to God's children, I speak to the, to, to, to the, to the glory of God Amen. through them because they are human, not because Amen. they are black human. Are you Amen. getting that? I'm with you, brother. I'm I with you. Every no, I agree with Mark Burns on this. Your skin color should not matter you should be allowed to talk about or think about or have an opinion about any subject at all period but that being said i am extremely concerned about the fact that gene bailey even brought this up i don't know what he's about to say you're allowed to have an opinion on anything but if your opinion is extremely disturbing and racist then you can expect to be called out for it so we'll see what happens I need, I need every white pastor. Where's the camera? Amen. Tell me where the camera's at. I need every white pastor to quit hiding behind Amen. the color of your skin yeah. and open up your mouth yeah. and speak Come to on. the truth of what thus saith the Lord of hosts. Amen. And this is how we win this nation Amen. back. Quit being dictated by Black Lives Matter. Amen. Let me just get that off my chest. Yeah. Okay, nobody is being quote-unquote dictated by Black Lives Matter, whatever that means. Black Lives Matter is just a human rights organization that's trying to improve the welfare and living conditions of, of an oppressed minority in the United States. That's what's happening right now. Number two, black people realize that the civil rights movement of Dr. Martin Luther King is not the civil rights movement of today. Actually, it is. And Do Martin Luther King Jr. would be absolutely disgusted with the modern day Republican Party. Absolutely disgusted with it. You know what's interesting? You know, these people are always talking about how violent Black Lives Matter is and how they burn cities down and make a mess, even though they claim to be nonviolent and all that other nonsense, right? Check this out. This is a political cartoon from that time. This is a political cartoon from the era of Martin Luther King. I'm not sure when it came out exactly, but this right here, this is a political cartoon from the era. It's Martin Luther King Jr. standing there talking to a reporter saying... I plan to lead another nonviolent march tomorrow, and the town is in ruins. Trash everywhere, cars destroyed, building destroyed, things on fire in the background. It's interesting to see that conservatives were using the exact same tactics back then that they're using today. The exact same ones. Black Lives Matter is overwhelmingly popular because they have overwhelmingly popular ideas and policies and, and opinions then start claiming they're violent so that we can lower their popularity. Start claiming they're burning cities down. People in New York City 
don't live in Portland, they don't know that they're not actually burning cities down. So if we claim that this is happening in Portland, they have no way of knowing if it's not true. They will assume that it is, by and large. That is the far right, and even honest, the, the moderate right, if there is such a thing anymore. This is the conservative strategy. And it's largely worked, unfortunately. Anyway, keep listening to Mark Burns demonize a movement and weaponize Martin Luther King Jr. against that movement. ...of Dr. Martin Luther King is not the civil rights movement of today. The LGBT community has hijacked the civil rights movement and black people realize that in America. Yeah. They're tired of the lies of the Democratic Party that has been playing to the heartbeat of the black community while black people still at the lowest financially in America per capita. We don't own homes. We don't own lands. But yet we but yet we're afraid that white people will put us in chains. Black people realize that there's more to us than the color of our That's skin. Right. We're That's tired right. of trying to get to the table. We're creating our own table. Yeah. And, and President Trump created policies to do it. It's true. All right. Dude, I, I'm not really f sure I fully understand what he was saying there. It sounded like he was agreeing with the goals and ideals of the Black Lives Matter movement, but uh, that can't possibly be it, knowing this guy. But okay, let's keep listening. The right. real civil rights movement yeah. is not based off of sexual gender. First of all, there's only two sexes. There's male and there's female. That's mostly correct, although there is a little bit of an in-between. He's not saying anything that anybody would disagree with so far. Everybody, literally every single person on planet Earth, just about, agrees with that, that fact. Our qualm is not with male and female. It's between man and woman. It's about gender, which is the psychological expression of sex, basically. Sex and gender are two different things. In fact, if you Google it, then it will show you the definitions. So here's the first definition. Either of the two sexes, male and female, especially when considered with reference to social and cultural differences rather than biological ones. So gender deals with social and cultural differences rather than biological ones, and sex deals specifically with biological differences. So yes, I think we all agree with you there, Mark. There are two sexes, male and female. Yes, we're all on the same page. You're not saying anything that's like blowing anybody out of the water or whatever. Yeah. I'm you know, he's getting an applause line for that. Dude doesn't even know his own talking points. No, I'm sorry. No, I want to yeah, no, no, follow up because I am a, I'm a, I guess I'm a white pastor. I'm Italian. So Wait, I, I'm Italian, so I don't, I don't know. I mean, I don't know if you noticed. I'm Italian, but anyway, that's what we're saying, Adrian. Listen, so. Dude is so cringy. <laughs> you know, here's the real deal. The real deal for me is I have a very multicultural church. And I do speak exactly what you're Praise saying, God. Thank the you. truth. And, and uh, those in our congregation um, that are black, they love truth. Yeah. That's what they're looking for. And, and Your mom loves truth. They can see how they're being lied to. <clears throat> yeah. So pastors, you need to speak up. Now, I do want to say something. You mentioned about the women. You also mentioned about the youth. Prophetically, why, why, what is the enemy afraid of? So the enemy only advertises what he's threatened by or he's afraid of. He's afraid of you women. That's why Jesus... What? The first thing he did was tell a woman, right? Because Brother Jesse taught me through all his tapes that women cannot keep secrets. And so... It's Brother Jesse? Women can't keep secrets. What? I don't understand. I feel like I'm missing out on a bunch of inside jokes or something so, so so anyway so he knew that so jesus told a woman first that he was alive so women you have a voice and you have a you have a place that god wants to use you but prophetically watch this judges five watch this there was war in the gates yeah we've been having a cultural war yeah they they didn't even know in judges five the name of their god they were choosing side roads, come on, cultural woke issues, until I, Deborah, a mother, she wasn't a career politician, she was a mother, just like you that are in this room, you that are watching, a mother. 
absolutely was used by God to deliver a nation. And this will happen again. Watch. A youth. Why youth? David rose up, a young lad. The enemy is afraid of this young generation. I listened to Charlie Kirk last night, and I thought, oh, my gosh. And God, Charlie Kirk is absolutely awful. My son, Matthew, and what they're doing, I'm like, I I've never seen such a greater anointing and boldness yeah, and wisdom right. on a younger generation. Why? Because they are the Davidic generation that are rising up mm -hmm. and saying, is there not a cause why most of the preachers and leaders, come on, Republicans, you could fix the mess if yeah. you would quit being uh, cowards. Yeah, 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 yeah. And here they were in the tent of the king. Yeah. Cowards. Cowards. See, this is the thing about Hank Kuhneman and, and the way he views the world. He believes that every single pastor in the country views things exactly the same way that he does. He believes that everybody... Like every Christian on the planet thinks the election or knows the election was stolen and knows that Donald Trump's the rightful president and knows that, you know, uh, whatever other he, uh, being gay is wrong and whatever else. He, they, he thinks that they all know these things unequivocally and they're too scared to say it because they're afraid of being shouted down by the people who don't know it aka liberals and the reason that they don't know these things to be true like being gay is wrong or whatever else is because they're possessed by demons this is how he views the world seriously it's just it's just sad man but the youth david rose up and said is there not a cause and took this nation or his nation back and we're going to do the same so i'm very excited by the way it's great to have you on man i'm happy to be here <laughs> <laughs> all right all right we're going to take a quick break when we come back jesse duplantis joins and we'll let him defend him oh boy jesse duplantis we're going to get into this one this is going to be entertaining as hell read matthew 6 5 to 8 and tell me republicans and christian nationalists aren't being hypocrites Read Galatians 5.3 and tell me they're not being hypocrites. Let's see. I think it's 5.3. I, again, I testify to every man who lets himself be circumcised that he is obligated to obey the whole law. That means all 106, uh, I'm sorry, 613 commandments, including no pork, no shellfish, uh, can't put two seeds in the same hole, no cotton and linen blends, the whole nine yards, baby. But they ignore it. Love your YouTube channel. I've been having a rough year. I have family in Ukraine. Your channel's been keeping me distracted. Just just subbed to your channel recently. I appreciate that. I'm sorry you're gonna I'm sorry you're going through that. I know that cannot be easy. Uh, good luck dealing with it. So that's Flashpoint. Absolutely nutty. And they make a point of hitting every culture war issue they possibly can. It's no surprise they attacked Black Lives Matter and trans people. That's kind of their MO at this point. The surprising part is they didn't go further than they did. Stick around for part two.